Now, once again, they are dealing with another major storm, this one bringing torrential rains to northern areas of the state. ABC's DeMarco Morgan has the details of President Biden approving Governor Newsom's request for an emergency declaration amid a series of devastating winter storms. Look how violent that water is. In Tulare County, California, floodwaters racing through the streets. Firefighters helping to rescue residents stranded by the rising waters. The heavy rain causing this road in Santa Cruz County to cave in. I've lived here my whole life and I've never seen the creek go actually through the road. In Monterey County, the Pajara River levee breached, leaving roads flooded. Caltran crews responding to areas of instability along this highway. And the foothills, this river flowing over its banks, homes threatened by the floodwaters. And the Sierra Nevada Mountains and the city of South Lake Tahoe, the heavy snow load crumbled to the awning of this gas station, sparking a gas fire. It's one of at least seven structures that have collapsed. The incoming rain coming in on top of that snow, we're doubling and tripling some of that weight. The city is cautioning against unnecessary travel as the area deals with the snow melt. We can see um, landslides, mudslides, um, also avalanche control is in effect. Over in Sacramento, the Oroville Dam opening up its main spillway for the first time in four years following record drought. So right now we're releasing 8,000 cubic feet per second of water. FEMA says federal assistance has now been made available to California as it continues to deal with a seemingly nonstop series of storms. DeMarco Morgan, ABC News, Los Angeles. You, you know, name it, California has had to deal with it. Yeah, before. and you know, it's it's kind of a, a sign of changes because yeah. we've been in a triple dip La Nina. We've had La Nina three winters in a row, and we're right. officially out of La Nina now, kind of in a neutral period before we get into El Nino. But we could be seeing some healthy rains potentially here this year. I'm hopeful we do because it has been a very long time of drought. Today, though, it was hot. It was just hot around San Antonio. Take a look at the Almanac. We got up to 92 degrees. That's two degrees shy of a record for the day. The record of 94 set back in 1954. And this morning we were down to only 63 degrees, well above the average for the low too. Now in the coming days, we're going to be seeing temperatures cooler than that. Today, 92 is the hottest we're going to be all spring break long. But outside right now, it's very mild. It's still nearly 80 degrees in San Antonio. We're an hour and a half away from midnight. It's 80 in Del Rio, 80 in Catula. As we take a wider view across the state of Texas, you can clearly see that it's much colder across North Texas, the Panhandle. This is where a cold front sits, and this front is going to move through tomorrow. It's going to be cooler tomorrow, but still warm. We're really not going to feel the cool air until about Monday, Tuesday in San Antonio. But what this is going to do immediately is shove all of this humidity out of here and it's going to be pretty dry behind that front. Notice too that uh, there's not too much rain around this front. In fact, we're not expecting any showers or activity from this front as it moves through tomorrow. Any of the storminess is going to stay up near that low uh, where there are some severe storms in Arkansas this evening. So again, the biggest change we'll notice tomorrow is a drop in humidity from that front starting off fairly muggy in the early morning hours and then humidity will come down dew points falling into the 40s it'll be pleasantly dry tomorrow even though it will be warm all right as we go ahead and take a look at your ksat 12 hour forecast tomorrow reminder sun's gonna rise an hour later spring forward in the overnight hours so we're not going to see sunrise until close to eight tomorrow temperatures will be in the 60s to start off the day near 80 degrees around noon and then we're forecasting a high of 84 tomorrow. So not quite as warm as it was today, but still a warm day. If you want to enjoy some time by the pool this spring break, tomorrow is the best day to do that because it's just going to get cooler from here on out. Elsewhere, temperatures tomorrow will be near 90 degrees in Del Rio, 92 Creases Springs, 95 in Catula, around the mid 80s around San Antonio, upper 70s in the Hill Country. We'll take you into neighborhood view here, 78 in Bernie and Bulverde, but 84 in San Antonio, 81 in Seguin, 81 in New Braunfels, nearly 90 in Sabinal, Uvalde, 80 seven in Divine, 84 in Floresville. So again, big temperature swings 
over the spring break. It's mainly going to be a pretty cool spring break, so we'll be warm tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday, only in the 60s. That's not great for pool days out there on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday will rebound a little bit in the 70s, but still fairly close to the average of 73. Then an even stronger front is going to arrive Thursday night into Friday. That's going to drop our highs down to near 60 degrees Friday and Saturday. And as for rain, it does not look great, for, especially during the first part of the week. A few sprinkles Monday and Tuesday when temperatures will be cooler. But by Thursday, with that stronger front moving through, I am forecasting at least some storms Thursday, Thursday night. Uh, but a, another big thing to keep in mind is that the, some of those mornings are going to be cold. Saturday morning, a week from today, we're going to be down in the 30s in San Antonio and potentially near freezing up in the hill country, Tim. Well, we saw you riding the roller coaster in your graphic, and now we all get to go on the ride with you. There we go. Welcome aboard. Wee! <laughs> all right, Sarah, thank you so much. All right, Andrew, Spurs have had a very dark season, but some big bright spots <laughs> last night. You know, speaking of roller coasters, it's kind of been up yeah. and down over the last couple games. They've won now on three of their last five, and they can thank Mamu Kilashvili for picking up the slack late in the fourth quarter. He scored 11 points in his Spurs debut. We'll hear from him on his debut. Plus, Longhorns are Big 12 champs after a big Big win over Kansas. Got the highlights next. I always wanted to have like game like off of European and swag of American player. So it was just like I feel like I combined both of them. <laughs> he certainly showed the swag yesterday. Spurs forward Sandro Mamokilashvili made a huge splash in the fourth quarter of last night's home victory in Big Board Sports. Our San Antonio Spurs took down the best team in the Western Conference. The Denver Nuggets last night 128 to 120 to earn their third win in their last five games. After a slow start in the first quarter, San Antonio flipped the switch in the second and kept the pedal to the metal throughout the second half. Keldon Johnson led the Spurs with 23 points, but the big spark came from Sandro Mamakilishvili. The European Georgia native made the most of his minutes in crunch time, scoring all 11 of his points in the fourth quarter. He says that performance happened because the team let him be himself on the court. Coach called a rub. He told me to pop and just play. And, you know, when you give a freedom to a guy to just come in and just pop, play, whatever comes to your mind, just do it. Uh, and you don't have to, like, look back and just wonder or think and stuff like that. It just helps you a lot. So you know, I feel like it was because of the coaches and teammates I came in, and it was much easier. It's so tough. I mean, I don't even know what it's like to be in that position. And he uh, he came in and provided great energy. Um, he's, he's just a good teammate. We all love him already. We've only known him for like 24 hours, and he's uh, he's already made an impact on our locker room. So just super happy for him. He works his butt off, um, and he can really play. So just great to see him um, thriving out there. Spurs will next take on the Thunder tomorrow night at 6 p.m. The top two seeds in the Big 12 Conference Tournament went head to head this afternoon. Texas taking on Kansas and how's this for an opening statement? Dylan DeSue drives to the one handed jam. That punch gives Texas an early four to two lead. A little later, ball movement here for the Horns. Brock Cunningham finds Christian Bishop down low for the lay-in and a 17-13 lead. Both teams trading baskets throughout the first half until Texas finds some separation late. Arterio Morris drains the triple. The Longhorns are fired up. They head into halftime up 76 to, excuse me, by 20. The second half, they keep it rolling. Bishop back out to Marcus Carr here for a wide open three ball. That makes it 52 to 41, Texas. Then off the steal, Serge Jabari Rice finds Morris for the slam on the break. No stopping the Longhorns tonight. They win it 76 to 56 to claim their second Big 12 title in the last three seasons. It feels amazing. Um, you know, anytime you get to play, on it, play in a scene like this is awesome, but it's a testament to the players and people within this program. It's good people from our managers and redshirt players all the way throughout. So I think that's been a big key to our success this season. Meanwhile, over in the SEC, Texas A&M battling Vanderbilt in the semifinals, and the Aggies are pouring it on early. Tyrese Radford comes up with a steal, finds Henry Coleman the third for the slam. A&M opens up on a 24-7 run, and they keep it going. Wade Taylor the fourth knocks down a triple. It's 42-19, and they're not done. Solomon Washington pokes the ball right to Coleman, who gets it back to Washington for the wide-open windmill jam. Texas A&M with a statement victory today, 87 
75. Aggies will face Alabama for the championship tomorrow. Over in the AAC, top-ranked Houston took on number four Cincinnati. The Cougars put on a show. Jamal Shedd finished 7 of 11 from the floor for 16 points. Jawan Roberts also had 16 points as Houston built a 38-23 lead at halftime, and they held the Bearcats at arm's length the rest of the game. The two-time defending conference champs will defend their title tomorrow. They win at 69 to 48. Coming up later in sports, it's opening night for San Antonio FC as they look to defend their title. There were some famous faces on hand at Toyota Field. Got it all broken down for you coming up. We'll look forward to that and we look forward to making our brackets here coming up soon too. Thank you, Andrew. Still ahead on the night beat, repeat health violations lead to a health inspector issuing a warning to a taco restaurant. We take you behind the kitchen door to find out what they got wrong. And for the first time in about 15 years, federal banking authorities take over a major bank in California after it collapses. Account holders are now trying to see if they'll get their money. That story coming up next as the night beat rolls on. Welcome back across America. Two Michigan police officers are recovering tonight after being shot in Detroit, trying to serve a warrant at a home. Detroit's police chief says one officer was hit three times. The other hit once. The injured officers were able to return fire. The suspect was injured. After a two hour standoff, the suspect was finally taken into custody. All three men found guilty in the murder of Ahmad Arbery are now appealing those convictions. Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and their neighbor William Bryan Jr. reportedly filed an appeal with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit earlier this month. They are asking for their convictions to be overturned. Gregory McMichael's paperwork claims the government failed to prove his actions on that fateful day were based on race. Travis McMichael and Brian are making similar claims in their court filings. The McMichaels are serving life sentences for their hate crime conviction, while Brian Jr. is serving up to 35 years behind bars. Customers, venture capitalists, startup owners, all trying to learn the fate of their money after the tech lender Silicon Valley Bank collapsed yesterday after it failed to raise enough money to end its capital crisis. It marks the second largest closure of a U.S. bank since 2008. When Washington Mutual fell during the financial crisis, state regulators have turned the bank over to the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The move usually means the FDIC will begin liquidating the bank's assets to pay back its customers. The FDIC says all insured depositors will have full access to their insured deposits by no later than Monday morning. They say uninsured depositors will get an advance dividend within the next week. And take a look at this caught on camera in Oregon. A double murder suspect escapes custody. This happened last February. The 28 year old suspect was escorted into a court by a deputy who then removed his handcuffs and leg shackles, which is required by law there. You see the suspect ease away from that deputy before he makes a mad dash to get on out of there. Outrunning the deputy who chases him down a hall and out of the building. That suspect was in court to answer to charges related to the fatal stabbings of two people in 2021. But his newfound freedom didn't last very long. Just hours later, the sheriff's department says that suspect was located in a nearby apartment, hiding under a blanket in a closet, and he was taken back into the custody. A business specializing in mini tacos got a big warning from health inspectors recently. Follow the rules or face continued inspections and fines for repeat violations. Let's go behind the kitchen door to see what they got wrong and what inspectors found at three other establishments. Mini Tacos Cantorito, located in the 500 block of Southwest Military Drive, got a 75 on their February inspection, a big drop from the 88 they got last October. The inspector found several repeat violations of food handling procedures that were previously explained. Hours old and day old cooked food in a fridge was still too warm. Employees weren't using proper hand washing methods and some weren't washing hands prior to using gloves and changing tasks. They also weren't washing dishes correctly. The inspector ordered a reinspection and warned failure to comply with regulations will result in continued reinspections. <laughs> Tony's Tacos to Go in the 2200 block of Nogalitos got a 79. Refried beans prepared the day before weren't properly cooled. The container of beans was voluntarily discarded. 
Employees were handling food with bare hands. They were told to stop using to-go bags and can liner bags to store food. They also needed to renew their permit. A reinspection was ordered. The Texaco Food Mart, located in the 1500 block of New Braunfels, earned an 82. Prepackaged foods in a cooler were too warm. The food was sent back to a vendor. Another refrigerator wasn't cooling. They were told to stop using it. They were improperly packaging their own ice for sale. The only hand sink wasn't working. And they were also missing a food permit. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Smoothie King in the 1200 block of Northeast Loop 410 got an 86. Mangoes were past their use-by date. A kitchen worker wasn't wearing a hairnet while handling food. Several bottles of residential use hot shot were found in the business, and there was a significant amount of flies. They were likely coming in through the back door that was propped open. We found that same door still left open this week. A worker told the inspector it jams from the outside. They were told to fix it by April 25th. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up after the break, if you drive a Kia made before 2022, listen up. There is a software update now available that could help make your car less appealing to car thieves. What you need to know next. A sticker is giving a lot of Kia owners some peace of mind. And Sierra dealerships are placing them on the windshields of Kia vehicles that have gone through the anti-theft software updates. The night team's Patty Santos tells us how in less than an hour, older model Kias won't be such an easy target for car thieves. A stolen Kia found in this condition. This is the same story being played out for Kia owners across the city. It's a TikTok trend going on right now. In the fall, we started reporting about the online challenge that sparked a rise in thefts of older model Kia and Hyundai cars made easy to steal due to a faulty ignition switch. Now some good news. Update. So we're doing the update now? Kia and Hyundai software updates are now available for millions of vehicles. So ignition switch off for 10 seconds. Sean Madison, software tech at Ansira Kia, shows us how in less than 15 minutes he's able to update the vehicle software. So whenever you go to start the car, um, it reads the key now, and if it doesn't see a key in the vehicle, it won't start the vehicle. Just trying to get it out there. And VP General Manager of Ansira Kia, Brian Rodriguez, says the upgrades are available for Kia models older than 2022. This update is a dealer only specific update has to be done with a Kia computer. Owners will start getting letters in the mail notifying them about the updates. But they can also just call local dealership to schedule one immediately. It has been successfully updated. This sticker is placed on the side windows, a warning to thieves. Yeah, so it's to let the people know that it actually has a immobilizer system in it now. But Rodriguez reminds drivers no vehicle can be made theft proof. Whether it's a Kia, whether it's any other maker model, if they want to steal it, they're going to steal it. Yeah. You're not going to stop them. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. It was a warm day around San Antonio, our hottest day since October of last year. Appropriate to start off spring break with a little bit of heat, but we're going to be all over the place when it comes to temperatures. So if you want to go out and enjoy some time by a body of water, I think tomorrow's going to be your best day to do it. Here's your floating forecast across the Guadalupe Comal rivers tomorrow. Winds are going to be from the north, pretty breezy at about 15 to miles per hour and at, at times gusting up to 20 miles per hour. We'll be able to warm up to 84. We'll have mostly sunny skies so that UV index is going to be very high skin damage time within 15 minutes. But as I mentioned tomorrow, probably the best day to be out on a body of water because it's going to be pretty cool for most of spring break, even cooler than those highs in the 60s Monday and Tuesday by the end of week and into next weekend. I'll have those details for you on a relatively cool spring break coming up in a bit. Great day to get outside, get in the pool. Hey, look, is it's that? a green oh, screen. It's the green screen. This is a little TV screen. magic. Now it's... we're going to make TV magic and see if we can make you appear. Let's see and make me disappear because Three, I don't know anything two, about the weather. Ah, look at that. There we magic. go. Magic. Boom. 
Yeah, well, I'll take it from here, Tim. <laughs> okay, we got up to 92 degrees for the high temperature today. Yeah, very warm. In fact, two degrees shy of a record. It got up to 94 in Hondo, 94 in Pleasanton. Now, that 92 is the warmest, makes it the warmest since October 15th in San Antonio. That's 147 days sign that things are changing. It's getting warmer out there. A lot of people eager to plant too. Although I will say there are going to be times this week and into next weekend where it's going to be cold, especially in the mornings. We'll talk about that in a bit. First though, let's take a look outside right now. It's relatively warm. It's 76 degrees in San Antonio, still 80 in Catula, 77 in Del Rio, 66 in Kerrville. And when we look at the humidity, dew points are very high around San Antonio. This is summertime dew point. Dew points in the upper 60s. It feels pretty muggy out there, but there's a dry line just to our west and that's allowed for it to be comfortable in areas like Rock Springs and Del Rio. As we look ahead to the future cast of humidity though, I want to show you that early tomorrow morning right around dawn, we're going to see a front move through and even though it's going to start off pretty humid in the pre dawn hours, those dew, dew points will be falling. Humidity will be falling throughout the day to tomorrow. So even though it's still going to be warm tomorrow, it is going to be a dry heat and a really pleasant day as dew points fall into the 40s right around the peak heat of the day. So when we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast tomorrow morning, we'll be waking up near 62. Just a reminder, sun's going to rise an hour later than we're used to. It'll be rising closer to 8 a.m. tomorrow, so you won't really see that sunrise until 747 tomorrow morning. And then we'll be looking at mostly sunny skies near 80 degrees right around noon. Notice that winds are going to be pretty breezy from the north behind that front, steady at about 10 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour at times. So a bit of a breeze. 84 for the high temperature tomorrow in San Antonio. In your neighborhoods, you'll be waking up in the upper 50s in the hill country, 57 near Kerrville, 62 Del Rio, 66 Catula, 64 in Pleasanton, 64 in LaGrange. And high temperatures tomorrow are going to be all over the map depending on where you live. Further north, a little bit cooler. It'll be 78 in Kerrville, but it'll be 90 in Del Rio, 95 in Catula, 97 in Laredo. Right around San Antonio in the mid 80s, that's a safe bet, low to mid 80s, 83 Converse, 81 in Seguin in New Braunfels, 87 in in Divine, 78 Bernie, Bulverde, and in Canyon Lake, it'll be 78 as well. As we take a look across the nation, uh, there is a big winter storm working its way through parts of the Great Lakes right now. This same system is going to pull in colder air throughout the week for us. It'll take its time getting here again tomorrow. We're going to be near 84, so still a warm day for your Sunday. But Monday and Tuesday, our highs will only be in the 60s. By Wednesday and Thursday, we'll be back into the 70s. By Friday and Saturday, though, a big drop in temperatures, even colder than Monday and Tuesday, struggling to get out of the 50s. So if I were to pick one perfect day to spend time outdoors, enjoy some time by body of water, it would be Sunday. The second day would be Wednesday because on Thursday we could actually see a few storms. About 30% coverage on Thursday for storminess. Otherwise, we'll just have a few sprinkles and isolated showers on Monday and Tuesday. But look at that. It looks almost like Powerball numbers rather than a forecast. Nice. It's kind of all over the place. So we'll have cold mornings. I'm eyeing Saturday morning of next weekend because as of now, it looks like we'll dip down into 30s around San Antonio. Could be nearer to freezing in the hill country, guys. And just remember to set those clocks forward tonight or you're going to be late wherever you're supposed to be tomorrow morning. That's Absolutely. That's our responsibility. <laughs> All right, Andrew, San Antonio uh, soccer, they, they had a heck of a season last year. Can they defend as champions? Yeah, it's only been four months since they actually claimed the title on Toyota Field. Guess what? They're back at home tonight to start a brand new season. When we come back, we've got highlights from a great opener from San Antonio FC plus a bad ump is suspended after one of the most egregious strike calls you'll ever see. Coming up. San Antonio FC unveiled their brand new championship banners. There are three of them after claiming the regular season title, the Western Conference title, and the championship cup in Big Board Sports. 
It was an electric atmosphere this evening at Toyota Field where the defending champs opened up their 2023 season in front of the hometown faithful. Spurs players Gorky Jeng and Charles Bassey were honorary team captains who were out on the field for the coin flip. And Mayor Ron flexed the championship cup in the middle of the field before the championship banners were officially unveiled. After all that pomp and circumstance, it was finally time to kick off the season, and SAFC wasted no time taking control of this one. 12th minute, Nico Hansen takes it into the box, drives it past the keeper with the right foot. The defending champs strike first in the new season. It's 1-0. Now, defense was a big reason they won it all last year, and it shows up again here in the 40th minute. Jordan Farr with a point-blank save. Reigning keeper of the year keeps Oakland off the board with a beauty. Then, final minute of stoppage time. How about this? PC with a corner kick right to Lamar Batista, who bicycle kicks it in. He's so pumped up, he's doing cartwheels. San Antonio leads 2-0 at halftime. Oakland does score to make it a one-goal game in the second half, but San Antonio answers in remarkable fashion. Batista catches the opposing keeper napping with a long ball that somehow bounces off the crossbar and in from midfield. What a strike. Two days after he was signed, Batista gets a brace in his SAFC debut, and San Antonio celebrates their championship with a win 3-1. SAFC next hits the road to take on Loudoun United next Sunday the 19th at Segra Field in Leesburg, Virginia. Tonight, the UIL State Boys Basketball Tournament wrapped up with championship games in the Alamo Dome, and the Brennan Bears were so close to playing for the 6A title. A valiant fourth quarter comeback wasn't enough to knock off Beaumont United in a heartbreaking 70-68 loss last night. Still, the Bears are very young, and they learned a lot about how they approached and played in Friday's semifinal. Everything they beat us by was in the scout. We've been scouting them all week, and uh, we said I mean, physicality, offensive boards. First half, they had to have a, at least 15 offensive boards. That's really what kept them in the game and ended up winning the game. So just staying in the scout, coming physical. You know, it was the first time here. Of course, there's nerves, all that. We didn't come ready to play at all. We brought it back. We brought it back in the second half. We had a, a great second half, but I feel like next year when we're back, it's not going to be the same. The Bears will return 11 players from this year's roster. One, two coming. It's down. Oh my gosh! Wow! He got rung up on ball two and the game is over. All right, so sometimes umpires get a bad rap. Yes. Not in this case. Left fielder Devon Mims was called out at the plate on an obvious low ball to mark the final out of Mississippi Valley State's 7-3 loss to New Orleans. It's believed that ump called the ball a strike because Mims questioned a low strike call the pitch before. The Southland Conference did not name the umpire, but did suspend him indefinitely. It's nice to see some accountability, finally, for some umpires who take it out on players. And granted, it probably didn't make an impact on the outcome of the game, but it's still a loss and it's still a black mark. That was very, very bad. Yes. All right, thank you, Andrew. We'll be right back. Well, I want you to look at just how kind of wacky this spring break forecast is because tomorrow we're going to be at 84, a nice day. But Monday and Tuesday, a few sprinkles and isolated shower highs only in the 60s. That's after mornings in the 40s. We'll be in the 70s Wednesday and Thursday. Now, Thursday is my best chance for a few storms. We're calling it about 30% coverage right now. But just when we warm up on Thursday, that front moves through. We'll be struggling to get out of the 50s on Friday and Saturday with cold mornings then as well. So all over the place for spring break. I'm sure people will still find a way to get out and enjoy everything San Antonio has to offer. Especially on St. Patrick's. Thanks for watching. That's all of our time. We'll see you tomorrow.